You're traveling through the unknown, a journey beyond the corners of reality, where the shadows whisper and the chill runs deep. Welcome to the dimension where your deepest fears are given form. This is The Midnight Mystery. Welcome to The Midnight Mystery. This episode is called, I Became a Prisoner of Time. In each episode, we delve into the shadowed corners of our existence, bringing you tales of the eerie, the uncanny, and the downright terrifying. From the realms of the supernatural to the depths of the human psyche, no stone is left unturned, no dark secret left hidden. As the clock once again draws near midnight, prepare to embark on another adventure into the uncanny, the eerie, the horrifying, the midnight mystery. I stumbled across the Lost Time Cafe during a late afternoon walk. It was nestled on the corner of an old street in the heart of town. The exterior was a patchwork of age. Weathered wood and chipped paint gave it an almost haunted look. But its enduring existence puzzled me. No one, not even the oldest residents, could recall its inception. Drawn in by curiosity, I pushed open the door. An old bell jingled overhead, announcing my entrance. I was immediately enveloped in the warmth of the cafe and the soft hum of chatter. A step inside was like stepping into a time capsule. The decor was a curious mix, spanning various eras. Art Deco lamps stood next to Victorian armchairs, and jazz from the 1920s played on a gramophone, while the walls were adorned with posters from the 70s. A woman sitting by the window caught my attention. She was dressed in what looked like early 20th century attire, complete with a flapper dress and feathered headband. She glanced my way, her lips curving into a knowing smile. First time here? She asked. Yeah, I replied a tad hesitant. I've lived here my whole life and never noticed this place. It's unique, she chuckled. It's easy to overlook what's been there all along. I'm Clara. Nice to meet you, Clara. I'm Dean. She motioned to the seat opposite hers. Have a seat. The cafe has a way of drawing you in. I slid into the seat, still absorbing my surroundings. It's like I've stepped into a different era, or multiple ones. That's the charm of Lost Time Cafe. Time here is fluid. Clara said with a twinkle in her eye. Before I could delve further into that mysterious statement, a barista approached. He was an elderly man with salt and pepper hair, wearing an old-fashioned waistcoat and tie. What can I get you, young man? Just a black coffee, thanks, I replied. He nodded and headed to the counter, where an ancient-looking espresso machine hissed and puffed. While waiting, I turned back to Clara. So, what do you mean by time being fluid here? Clara leaned in, her voice dropping to a whisper. This cafe, Dean, it's not like other places. Time here, it bends, shifts, and sometimes breaks. I chuckled, thinking she was joking. You're pulling my leg. She smiled mysteriously. Am I? Just then, the barista returned with my coffee, placing it before me with a friendly nod. Enjoy your drink and take your time. Time's what we have plenty of here. I took a sip, the rich aroma and taste filling my senses. For a moment, everything else faded away. The sensation was fleeting but left me feeling oddly disoriented. Clara noticed my expression and grinned. Good, right? It's incredible. Never tasted anything like it, I admitted, still trying to shake off the strange feeling. She leaned back, gazing around the cafe. This place has its secrets, Dean, and every person who walks through that door becomes a part of its tapestry. Some come to remember, some to forget, and others like you, stumble upon it by fate. Her words gave me chills. Was this some kind of themed cafe? An immersive experience? Or was there something more profound, more mysterious at play? A couple at a nearby table laughed, their clothes unmistakably from the 60s. A man by the bar, with a slicked back hairstyle and pinstripe suit, hummed along to the jazz tune. And for a moment, I wondered if I'd stepped into a place where past, present, and future intertwined, a realm untouched by the linear passage of time. The warmth of the cafe enveloped me, and as I sipped my coffee, I chatted with a few of the patrons. A man named Thomas, dressed in suspenders and a bow tie, described the town's events as if they were fresh from the 1940s. Beside him, a young woman named Mia gushed about the latest dance, the Jitterbug, it felt as though the cafe was a gathering spot for people from various epochs. However, amidst the tales of yesteryears, a middle-aged woman named Jenna sat with a laptop, 
which seemed out of place. Working remotely? I inquired, nodding towards her screen. Jenna looked up and smiled. Always. You wouldn't believe how fast things move these days. Gotta keep up. Our conversations were pleasant and fleeting, and before I knew it, my coffee was empty. I should be heading out, I announced, stretching. You're always welcome back, Dean, Clara remarked, her eyes still harboring that mysterious twinkle. As I stepped out of the cafe, the jingle of the old bell seemed to resonate for a second too long, like an echo from a distant past. The warm amber hue of the setting sun had transformed into a radiant, vibrant cityscape that looked unfamiliar. The quaint buildings of my town had been replaced with sleeker, modern structures, glass and steel glistening under the illumination of neon signs. Cars on the road had a futuristic design, silently zipping past me. Even the pedestrians had wearables I couldn't recognize, with some sporting holographic displays. Confused, I walked to the storefront window of a nearby electronics store. Amidst the gadgets on display, my reflection caught my eye. My face looked older, the beginnings of crow's feet and deeper laugh lines. A stubble was more pronounced and my hair had streaks of gray. No way, I muttered, touching my face in disbelief. This can't be real. I fumbled in my pocket for my phone, hoping to call someone, anyone who might explain this madness. But my phone, which should have been the latest model, now looked archaic. Trying to boot it up, I was met with an error screen. Need some help? A voice interrupted my panic. I turned to see a teenage girl, looking at me with a mix of curiosity and concern. She held out a slim device that projected a holographic screen. You seem lost. And that phone? She chuckled. It's ancient. Here, use mine. Thank you, I stammered. I'm just trying to figure out, well, everything. What year is it? She smirked. 2033. You okay, mister? You look like you've seen a ghost. 2033? I gasped. The cafe. It must have been the cafe. I recalled Clara's words. Time here is... fluid. Frantic, I turned back to the spot where the cafe had been, but it was replaced by a modern bookstore. The Lost Time Cafe had vanished. The girl, sensing my distress, gently touched my arm. Hey, it'll be alright. Sometimes this town can be... weird. If you need a place to regroup, there's a community center down the street. They help folks adjust. Adjust? To what? She shrugged. Life, I guess. Everyone has their moments. Take a deep breath and remember. Time has a way of working things out. As she walked away, her words echoed in my mind. Time has a way of working things out. Perhaps. But right now, time seemed to be the very thing unraveling my existence. Determined, I made my way to the community center, hoping to find answers and with luck, a way back to my own time. The community center provided a brief respite, but I was restless. I needed answers. How had a mere coffee break catapulted me a decade into the future? Desperation led me back to where the Lost Time Cafe once stood. Much to my astonishment, the cafe had reappeared, replacing the bookstore, its age-old sign swaying gently. I burst through the door, the familiar bell jingling overhead. The interior was the same eclectic mix of eras, Customers chatted happily, but my focus was on the counter where Elias, the old barista, was brewing a fresh pot. His eyes met mine, and there was a knowing look in them. Back so soon, Dean? I took a deep breath, trying to control my mounting frustration. Elias, what's going on? I leave for an hour and I'm suddenly ten years older? Elias sighed, placing a cup of coffee in front of me, unsolicited. Sit. You're not the first, nor will you be the last to experience the quirks of this cafe. I sipped the coffee, its warmth providing a small comfort. I need answers, Elias. Please. The old man leaned against the counter, choosing his words carefully. This cafe, Dean, stands on a unique crossroads of time. You could say it's a rift, a wrinkle, an anomaly. Some call it magic, others a curse. Time doesn't behave here. It's fickle, fluid. Some customers like you find themselves thrust forward. Others, they lose years, sometimes decades. But why? I pressed. How? Elias hesitated, his gaze drifting to the grand old clock that stood in the heart of the cafe. Many years ago, a clockmaker tried to capture and control time. He sourced parts from all over the world, from places where time was said to behave differently. When he assembled the clock, he placed it here, and thus the cafe was born around it. 
I stared at the antique clock, its pendulum swinging rhythmically, almost hypnotically. So it's the clock's fault? Elias nodded slowly. That clock is both the heart and bane of this place. Its ticks and talks are not just seconds, but years, centuries. And every person who enters gets caught in its web. Some for the better, some for the worse. My mind raced. Is there a way to fix it? To return to my time? Elias studied me for a moment. Many have tried, Dean. Some succeeded, while others... Well, they got lost further in time. The clock is unpredictable. A sense of hopelessness threatened to overwhelm me, but I fought it back. I have to try. I can't live like this, in a time that's not mine. Elias reached below the counter, producing a small, intricately designed key. This, he began, is the key to the clock's inner workings. If you're brave enough to navigate its gears and springs, you might find your way back. I took the key, its weight surprisingly heavy for its size. Thank you, Elias. He gave me a sad smile. Just remember, time is delicate. Tread carefully, or you might tear its fabric. Determined, I approached the towering grandfather clock. As I inserted the key, I could feel the immense power and energy emanating from it. Taking a deep breath, I began my journey to reclaim the years that the Lost Time Cafe had stolen from me. The weight of Elias' revelations settled heavily on my shoulders. But I needed more. To know the heart of the Lost Time Cafe, I had to hear the stories of its patrons, to learn from their experiences. Perhaps in their tales, I could find a clue, a pattern, something that would help me navigate the clock's enigmatic design. I first approached Mr. Stanton. He was a tall, dapper man with silver hair, sitting alone in a corner, sipping an espresso. His eyes bore the melancholy of lost years. Mr. Stanton? I began hesitantly. He looked up, a faint smile crossing his lips. Ah, Dean, the newcomer. Elias said you'd come asking. I nodded, taking a seat opposite him. I need to understand, to find a way back. Elias mentioned you've been trying to reclaim your years? A sigh escaped him. Indeed. I started coming here, hoping to recapture the golden days of my youth. But each visit only thrust me further into the future. Decades lost in mere moments. So, you've never found a way back? His gaze grew distant. I once met someone who claimed they'd figured it out, but they vanished before sharing the secret. Now, I keep coming, hoping, dreaming. I jotted down mental notes. There was determination in Mr. Stanton's eyes, mixed with resignation. Next, I approached Nora. With her beehive hairdo and vibrant dress, she looked like she'd stepped straight out of a 1960s magazine. Her posture, however, held a stiffness, revealing her discomfort with the world around her. Nora, I began gently. I heard you're from the 60s. How are you coping? She gave a wistful smile. Oh, honey, every day's a struggle. The world's so different now. I miss my time, the music, the dances. Here, everything moves so fast. Do you ever think of going back? Tears glistened in her eyes. Every single day. But the cafe, it's never taken me back. So I've tried to adapt, to find a new rhythm in this chaotic world. Lastly, I approached the most peculiar pair, Jessa and Jake, the mismatched twins. Jessa, with the grace of a grown woman, sat protectively next to Jake, who bore the exuberance of a teenager. Jessa, Jake, I greeted. Elias told me about your unique situation. Can you share? Jessa sighed. We came here together, hoping to enjoy a cup of coffee and each other's company. But when we left, I was thrust into adulthood, while Jake, well, Jake piped up, grinning. I got the better deal, sis. Stuck in my teens. But you two never tried to reverse it? I asked. Jessa nodded. We did, but every attempt just intensified our age gap. It's like the cafe enjoys playing this cruel joke on us. Jake draped an arm around Jessa. But hey, we still have each other, right? Age is just a number. Their bond was heartwarming, a beacon of hope amidst the cafe's temporal chaos. As I sat, Pondering their stories, a pattern emerged. The cafe seemed to respond to one's deepest desires, but in the most unpredictable ways. For Mr. Stanton, it was a yearning for his past. For Nora, a wish to remain in her comfortable era. And for the twins, 
perhaps a playful sibling rivalry turned into a tangible age gap. With these insights, I felt more prepared, armed with knowledge to face the mysterious clock once again. But first, I'd need to discern my own desires and how they might influence my journey through time. I sat at the bar, slowly sipping my coffee, as Elias meticulously cleaned an old espresso machine. His fingers, nimble despite his age, worked deftly, but his attention was on me. Dean, he began, voice grave. It's clear you've taken to the tales of our patrons, but there's more to know about the clock. I nodded, encouraging him to continue. I've gathered as much. Tell me about it. Elias leaned in. The grandfather clock isn't just any clock. It was crafted using fragments from ancient timepieces worldwide, each rumored to possess supernatural qualities. Legends tell of a gifted clockmaker who, in a bid to master time itself, fused these pieces together, creating what now stands as the heart of this cafe. But why would he do that? Why toy with time? I questioned, genuinely curious. Elias sighed. Some say it was for lost love, wishing to turn back the hands of time to be with her again. Others claim it was pure hubris, wanting to defy nature. But whatever the reason, he unleashed something uncontrollable. As I digested this, a bold idea formed in my mind. Elias, if the clock's inconsistencies are causing the time anomalies, what if we were to repair it? Rectify whatever's gone wrong inside? Elias raised an eyebrow, clearly surprised. That's ambitious, Dean. Many have thought of it, but the task isn't straightforward. The clock's interior is a labyrinth, and its mechanics are tied to the very fabric of time. Determination surged within me. I have to try. I can't accept this as my new reality. And maybe, just maybe, I could help the others too. Elias seemed to consider my words deeply. After what felt like hours but was only minutes, he replied, Very well. I'll aid you as best I can. Together we approached the towering clock. As Elias inserted the intricately designed key into its heart, the clock face swung open, revealing its mysterious innards. Gears of various sizes and metals, springs that shimmered with odd colors, and pendulums that moved in mesmerizing patterns filled its depth. Drawing a deep breath, I ventured. So, where do we start? Elias pointed to a peculiar section where gears from different eras meshed together, causing a visible distortion. This is where most of the inconsistencies lie. Different eras, different mechanics. They're not in sync. Carefully, with Elias guiding, I began the meticulous process. We rearranged, replaced, and recalibrated, ensuring each piece found its rightful place and rhythm. Hours seemed to slip by. The cafes hum a distant echo. Finally, with a heavy sigh, I fastened the last gear into place. The distortion seemed to have settled, the gears now working in harmonious unity. Did we... did we do it? I asked, hope tinging my voice. Elias, looking equally exhausted, nodded slowly. Only time will tell, Dean. Closing the clock, we waited with bated breath. Moments passed, then hours. The cafe's environment began to shimmer and warp, and I felt a pull, as if the universe itself was tugging at my soul. Elias smiled, his form fading. Remember, Dean, time is delicate, but sometimes... With determination and a bit of luck, you can bend it to your will. The weight of the task before me grew with every gear I adjusted. Just as I felt a semblance of progress, a sudden drop in temperature sent shivers down my spine. The warm ambience of the cafe dimmed, replaced by an eerie, otherworldly glow. From the corners of my eyes, translucent figures began to materialize, swirling around the opened clock. The ghostly apparitions whispered among themselves, their voices echoing the sorrows and regrets of times lost. A woman in a Victorian gown, her eyes hollow with sadness, floated closer. Beware, young man, she murmured, her voice echoing in the chilling silence. I too attempted to reclaim my lost moments, but the clock, it's relentless, unforgiving. Beside her, a soldier in a World War I uniform added, The gears you touch have consequences. Each turn can alter fates, rewrite destinies. The ticking of the clock, previously soft and rhythmic, became louder, each tick resounding like a thunderclap, threatening to drown out the warnings of the spectral visitors. The atmosphere grew dense, oppressive, as if time itself was resisting my intrusion. Elias, sensing my growing unease, shouted over the cacophony, Stay focused, Dean. 
Their regrets are real, but you must hold on to your purpose. Remember why you began this. Drawing strength from his words, I steeled myself, trying to block out the haunting whispers. With newfound determination, I continued my task, driven by the hope of undoing the cafe's temporal chaos and proving that while the past holds lessons, the future remains unwritten. The echoing warnings of the ghosts still fresh in my ears, I finally paused, my hands trembling slightly. The weight of the situation was undeniable. I turned to Elias, seeking some guidance, some hint that this could all be resolved. Elias met my gaze, his eyes clouded with a mix of sadness and determination. Taking a deep breath, he began, Dean, there's something you need to know, something I've never shared with anyone who's entered these doors. I leaned closer, intrigued and anxious. What is it, Elias? I'm not just a mere custodian of this cafe, he admitted with a heavy sigh. I am its creator, its prisoner. I stared at him, taken aback. What do you mean? Elias's gaze drifted to the majestic clock. Centuries ago, in the 1800s, I was a renowned clockmaker. A personal tragedy, a loss too painful to bear, drove me to gather these enchanted clock pieces. I believed that by merging their powers, I could manipulate time, undo the events that shattered my world. I could hear the pain in his voice, the weight of years upon years of regret. But something went wrong. Elias nodded solemnly. Instead of granting me control over time, the clock ensnared me. I became bound to this cafe, destined to witness others entangled in its unpredictable web. I've seen joy, sorrow, hope, and despair, all the while trapped, unable to free myself. I looked at the man before me, truly seeing him for the first time. The weight of centuries in his eyes, the burden of countless stories, and a heart still yearning for release. Elias, I murmured. We'll fix this. Not just for me, but for you too. As I listened to Elias' confession, a newfound determination settled in me. I would not only repair the clock to restore my own lost years, but to free Elias from his centuries-old prison. With meticulous precision, I began inspecting each component of the clock. My fingers brushed against a misaligned cogwheel, concealed behind an ornate pendulum. The subtle distortion it caused seemed to be at odds with the rest of the mechanism. A hunch told me this was the critical component responsible for the time anomalies. With a deep breath, I carefully realigned the cogwheel, ensuring its teeth perfectly meshed with the neighboring gears. As I did so, a hum, a frequency I'd never felt before, began to resonate throughout the cafe. Elias, sensing the shift, yelled, Dean, whatever you've done, brace yourself. The grandfather clock's pendulum began to swing wildly, faster than natural. A blinding surge of light emanated from its depths, quickly enveloping the entire cafe. Time itself seemed to pause, the deafening silence interrupted only by the rapid ticking of the clock. As the brightness intensified, I could see shadowy figures. Mr. Stanton, Nora, Jessa, Jake, all suspended in this luminous void. Their faces showed a mix of fear, hope, and awe. We were all interconnected, bound by the threads of time that the clock had once ensnared. Then just as suddenly as it began, the light receded. The ticking slowed to its usual rhythmic cadence. I blinked, my vision adjusting, and found myself standing on the familiar sidewalk outside my office. The cafe was nowhere in sight. My reflection in the glass door showed my younger face, the years stripped away by the cafe restored. Confusion took hold. Had it all been a dream? The Lost Time Cafe, Elias, the regulars, all of it? As I reached into my pocket, I found a worn-out business card. It read, Lost Time Cafe, where moments last forever. A flood of memories returned, yet they felt distant, more like remnants of a dream rather than lived experiences. The initial relief of seeing my younger face faded as I took in the world around me. Futuristic vehicles zoomed overhead, and the architecture was sleeker, more advanced than anything I had known. My initial assumption that I was back in my own time was wrong. I was somewhere far more advanced. A holographic newsstand nearby displayed the date. It was fifty years from the time I last remembered. My heart sank. The correction to the clock's mechanism had indeed set things right for the others, but at a personal cost to me. I was a man out of time, in an era where I knew no one. As I wandered the unfamiliar streets, I overheard snippets of conversation from passers-by. 
talking about the latest technological marvels and socio-political events. The world had moved on, and I felt like a relic of the past. I found a public plaza with a reflective pool. Looking at my reflection, I saw the same young face. But the eyes? They held the weight of the experiences from the cafe. The sorrow, hope, loss, and lessons from countless stories entwined with time. A friendly voice pulled me from my introspection. Lost, are you? An elderly woman with kind eyes and a gentle smile stood beside me. In more ways than one, I admitted, offering a weak smile. She chuckled softly. This city can be overwhelming, but it's also filled with opportunities. It's all about perspective. I looked at her, sensing a depth in her words. Have you ever felt out of place? Like the world moved on without you? She nodded, her eyes distant for a moment. A long time ago, but I learned that every moment, every era, holds its challenges and wonders. It's up to us to adapt, to find our place. I pondered her words. Thank you, I said genuinely. I needed to hear that, she smiled. Sometimes all we need is a gentle push in the right direction. The two of us sat in companionable silence for a while, watching the world pass by. As evening approached, I felt a renewed sense of determination. The haunting memories of the Lost Time Cafe would always be with me, serving as both a reminder and a guide. With a newfound purpose, I ventured into this futuristic world, seeking to find my place, to make connections, and to build a new life. I hope you enjoyed our episode. I'd like to extend a heartfelt thanks to you, our brave listeners. Your presence in this shared journey into the unknown is what fuels our stories. Your fascination is our motivation. Did this episode send chills down your spine? Leave your comments, share your thoughts, your theories, your own midnight mysteries. Your feedback is the beacon that guides us through the uncharted territories of our stories. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe to our channel. By joining the Midnight Mystery family, you won't miss out on a single chilling tale. As a subscriber, you'll be the first to know when a new episode lurks around the corner, ready to pull you back into the shadowy depths of the unknown. This is the Midnight Mystery signing off, leaving you with a simple reminder. When the clock strikes 12, fear the silence, for that's when our tales come to life. Good night, Midnight listeners. And remember, not all who wander into the dark are lost. <laughs>